This right here is a Mr. Funnel. I'm going to show you why I consistently use this. Because number one, when it comes to my boat, don't trust anything, don't trust anybody. And if you want it done right, do it yourself. And if you want it protected, do it yourself. And I'm going to show you why the Mr. Funnel, uh, why I use it all the time. I just took some gas from the gas station, put it in some jerry cans because I didn't need a whole lot. I just want to kind of top off my fuel tank and the Jetty Wolf in the boat here. And I was taking uh, the fuel out. I do it with just a siphon tube, real easy. Okay, but this is the Mr. Funnel. And what it does is it captures any sediment and water or anything down to, I think, like almost 10 micron, kind of like a, a fuel filter in your boat, a Raycor or something. It's got some gas in it of what it just filtered out, and I'm going to show you. The Mr. Filter is a big filter, okay, it's just a funnel, and it has this fine mesh in it, and it creates a reservoir on the bottom. This mesh won't even let through fuel additives. Many times they're too thick to go through here, even when they're mixed in with the gas. It's a pretty good, you know, thing to have around, especially if you're putting old gas in tractors or lawnmowers, or you've had gas sitting up in a, in a gas can for a while. And it says right here, caution, additives or chemicals may cause water Oh, may cause water to pass through the filter. It's one of those things that the filter creates has like a little sump in the bottom. So this goes into the bottom of the filter. And then I'll show you what it does. As you can see, the filter sits down at the bottom. All right. The filter sits down at the bottom and fuel gathers and water gathers right here in the bottom of the filter that can't pass through and go into your tank and at the same time it has that super micro fine mesh in it or screening I know it's going to be hard to see but there you go and it won't let water or debris go through and it's, just, it's the last time that you'll be able to really filter your fuel before you put it in your tank. And then the next thing is, is your fuel filter captures it. And if your fuel filter doesn't capture it, well, then your filters in your engine will end up capturing it. All right, so let me show you what it caught. Okay, this is the gas that just came out of a jerry can that I constantly use, constantly use. So these cans don't sit around. But if you can see, there's no water that I can detect. All right, there's no water. But if you can see in the yellow fuel in this white container, all those little brown flecks in there. Okay, I'm gonna try to show you. But there is a whole bunch of debris cannot count on the gas stations you can't count on the gas stations to have their filters being changed constantly and just with that amount of volume of fuel you're going to end up getting some particulates i don't want those in my gas tank and i don't want those in my fuel filter and then I don't want those in my fuel filter in my Suzuki. So that's the last line of defense is usually something like the Mr. Filter here. What it does is a lot of people complain that when you put this in your gas filler, like I do here, right? My rail is sort of in the way, so it doesn't really let it sit down. A lot of people say this is wasted gas. Oh, it's wasted gas because it creates this little sump down in the bottom where when this fits down in here, there's a level where everything gathers and only the good fuel can.
can pass through this screen. I would say that this little bit of fuel right here is, that's okay to burn. I mean, so what? So what? Look, um, what is that? Four ounces, three ounces of gasoline, but there's a lot of particulates in it that I don't want in my fuel system. So you've got to do what you can do. Next thing that I have old videos of that no one ever sees, back when I started my whole entire YouTube channel, is we're going to take this gas right now and we're going to test it for ethanol content. Yes, my Suzuki 250 here with the beautiful patriotic cover on it. My Suzuki 250, supposedly according to the handbook, the manual, and every video about it from like my year and up, which I believe mine is, it was a 2013 purchased in 2014. It's not old, old, but you know, they're coming out with newer and fancier and better all the time. Mine supposedly was good according to Suzuki, uh, for up to E15. And if you're paying attention to anything to do with politics today, the only thing that I'm sort of upset with, my duly erected, elected president, that he is okaying the production of E15. And the reason he's doing it is to get the farmers off of subsidies and let them sell their product, sell their corn and things like that it's it gets into politics that i don't necessarily understand but he was in iowa and he was speaking to the farmers about the pr uh, producing of e15 i'm totally against all ethanol production myself we all know what the hazards of ethanol are and it's not a big deal for me i am constantly turning over fuel in my boat but let me get the ethanol test kit going here. And we're going to test this brand new fuel straight out of the tank at my local Exxon that I've been going to for 15 years. Let's check because at the last check that I did many, many years ago when I had Hondas on the back of my boat, this Exxon never had, <clears throat> as the sticker says, could contain up to 10% ethanol. The most that this Exxon really ever had was 5 or 6% that I ever tested. With modern engines today, they're kind of making it for that. But if you've got an old two-stroker and you're finding that it's not running like it used to, that could be, that could be the issue. Stand by, and I'll be right back with the ethanol test kit. All right, this is my ethanol test tube, I guess you could say demarcations on it and if you can see I have the water I have water up to this line right here it says add water to this line and then this line at the top right here is where you add gasoline so I have the water up to the mark and then what it's going to do is if I'm going to fill it up here to the gasoline right on this mark I know it may be hard to say because heck I'm just doing this impromptu. And then I'm going to shake it. And there's degree marks right in here. Down here, right there is 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 25%, and 30%. What is going to separate as ethanol. If you haven't seen this done yet, you've been living in a cave. I started doing videos about this probably close to 10 years ago. Now I'm going to fill it up with fuel to the line up here. I'm going to give it a shake, and I'm going to let it sit, and we're going to see the phase separation. Okay, now I have the gasoline up to the top demarcation line, and you can see how it's already separated. The gas is sitting on top of the water. And I'm going to put the cap on, and I've been doing this on and off for years and years and years. I kind of backed off of it a little bit, since the fact that my Suzuki can run up to E15, supposedly, according to every video in my handbook, basically, my manual, that's what it's looking like right now after shaking it. And down here is the degrees of separation. 
that will tell us the amount of ethanol that this gas contains. So we're going to let it sit. It gives you the step-by-step -step instructions of how to do this. The most important thing is the percentage. I've got it sitting on the back here of the boat. You want it on basically a level area and you're going to shortly see it's already pushing up to 10 percent. I'll give it a moment and see because I'm not sure if they still do this stuff called winter blends, summer blends on gasoline. I don't really worry about it that much. I do this because I have the need to know. I filter my gas before I put it in because I don't want that stuff. I don't want particulates getting in. I don't know if I'm pumping out water at the bottom of the fuel tanks at the local Exxon. I'm not saying anything that's wrong with Exxon or the station that I go with or any other stations. But you have to do your own due diligence uh, to keep from having fuel problems, especially if you have an older boat. I've got a gas tank that I just put in my boat maybe a year, a year and a half ago. Brand new poly tank under the deck. I know what I've done since that tank was bone dry, brand new. All right. I constantly do my filters. Um, I'm needing right now to do the high pressure filter in my Suzuki. The low pressure filter is very simple. It's the water fuel separator slash low pressure filter. It's looking right now that the Exxon is selling pure 10% ethanol fuel at this moment. The 10% line is right here. And my Exxon down the street used to sell 5% ethanol. Last time I really checked it, it was only 5 maybe 6%. Now it's full 10%. 10% ethanol. Soon pumps coming to a town near you, pumps will say Boat US has been fighting it day in, day out, lobbying the government to not bring it in. But you will have to look at pumps because pumps will soon be saying will contain up to 15, that's up here, 15% ethanol. Now we're down here at 10 you've got an old outboard, an old two-stroker oil burner, right? Nothing wrong with that, but I would start paying attention severely if you start seeing it. Boat US is asking the government to super label, and I think it's in parts of the country right now, possibly up in the Northeast, New England, and areas like that, they already have E15 at every gas station, I think. There you go. It's at exactly 10% ethanol right now. That's how you test. It's very simple. You can buy these anywhere online. I've had numerous ones, and this little test tube bottle here always seems to be dead on. It's very easy. You fill it up full of gas. Or fill it up, yeah, if you fill it up full of um, water to this mark right here. Then on top of it, you fill up gasoline to this mark, and then you vigorously shake it. And I'm not an expert. All I know is how I test and what I do. I hope that's just a little bit of education. I highly recommend the Mr. Funnel. I've been using it for years and years. And if you go to an iffy gas station and you're filling up your boat, you're out in BFE somewhere and you have no, you're on the road and you have no earthly idea about that gas station. It doesn't look busy. It doesn't look like it has a lot of business. It's owned by, you know, who the heck knows? It's some off the wall brand or something like that. I would think seriously say, keep a Mr. Funnel in your boat. I run all my fuel right from the pump through the Mr. Funnel. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. I, I, I don't do it every time either. But I'd say 90% of the time, all my fuel runs through the Mr. Funnel to gather up any debris and any water 
you do not know if that water is in there. John Graviscus did it with the rep from the company, and they tested it also on ShipShape TV. So there you go. That's just a little FYI. Leave your comments below if you know anything about it. You know more than me. That's fine. We're all here to learn something because if you don't know, how are you going to know? You're just going to learn from somebody else. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Let's just spark some conversation, if nothing else. All right? So this is Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel with just another installment of, hey, check this out.